I had left uh, whatever show it was, and I was in one of those lean periods, mm -hmm. and nothing was happening. I wasn't in any trouble. I'd saved some money, but uh, I was getting worried. I was losing confidence, and I ran into a guy on the street who I knew casually, a guy named Marshall Shecker. And Marshall was close to the Sid Caesar show in some capacity. I don't know what it was. I don't remember. And he said, hey, why don't you go over and talk to Sid? Uh, they're looking for a guy to, to be the uh, head writer in the summer. They need an idea. Well, I never dreamed of Sid Caesar. So I went over. He took me over and introduced me to Sid. And we talked for a minute, and he said, well, put something on paper so I can look at it. So I laid out a, an idea for a summer replacement for the Sid Caesar show. All the regulars were leaving. And I got a tip from someone at the network that what they really would like is a show that would tip its hat to the different stations of, of, in the network across the country, you know, Boston, or this week, Chicago, something like that. So I, I made a suggestion where there's a, a dance band, again, jazz music, a dance band, and the manager of the band was a, a stand-up comic uh, from Brooklyn. Phil Foster was, they, they had been talking to him about something else, but this uh, tough Brooklyn manager of a dance band. Then we'd get a girl, a, Buddha, a Dagmar, big, well-endowed, blonde, dumb, you know, the stereotype. And there was a dance band at the time, Bobby Sherwood, a wonderful swinging band. Uh, I knew that Sid liked, uh, had mentioned that in our first conversation. Anyway, I put, the band would travel from city to city and there'd be a comic adventure and rehearsals for the band so the girl could sing, the band could play, we could fill out the program that way. So Sid says, hey, that's a great idea. I'll buy it. Come on the staff and learn how we think around here, and then you'll be head writer and put the thing together for the summer. Boy, I'll say, and my agent, Al Levy, uh, made a big deal for me with Sid's company. And uh, I hired some people for the writing staff. But in the meantime, I was on this, not formally on the staff, but I was in the writer's room contributing just the way that I acted like a writer all the time. I was referred to as the tame Gentile on the show. And it was fun. Those guys were funny. I died laughing. And once in a while, I'd get a joke in. Uh, Sid okayed the three scripts that we had written, two of the three scripts, mm -hmm. and the other one was to be patched up. And he went to went to Europe with his wife. And he was in Paris a couple of days and didn't like it, and came back, reread the scripts and says, threw them out. We're going to do a show about a Midwest druggist. I said, Sid, with Phil Foster? He said, yes, with Phil Foster. And I said, well, I, you know, I made strong objections about that, thinking that I'd be the head writer or a writer on the show. And 10 minutes later, a guy came in and says, Charlie, clean your desk out. Sid dumped you. Well, I was brokenhearted, but I called my agent, and he said, don't be upset. Let's see what we got here. And it turned out I was paid for the whole summer and renewed for the following year at a small raise.